Looks like we have a dissenting opinion. Go f talk to those people. Yeah. Man, f off. I try to reason with you. No, have a good day. Get the f away from me. Get the f away. I heard you screaming racism. Get the f away from me now. That's not very ladylike language. Away from me. She's all yours, officer. <laughs> Well, Yahoo Nation is taking to the streets, quite literally. They're on Harvard and they're heading to Queen's Park and they are again sending the same message to Premier Doug Ford. Open up this economy, Mr. Premier. Indeed, Ontario is now ranked ninth out of 10th in terms of provincial economies. Only Newfoundland is worse. And these people, they're sick and tired of not being able to get a haircut, go for a manicure, go work out at the gym. Premier Ford, was on the radio earlier today and he was saying that no one wants the economy fully opened more than he does after all he did campaign on the election slogan Ontario open for business in 2018 but he says he is beholden to the scientists and the doctors who are advising him not to and yet look what's happening around the world tomorrow Portugal is fully opening their economy, they're welcoming back tourists, and yet it seems that Ontario is going the opposite direction. Just yesterday, a restaurant that opened in Minden, he was uh, threatened with a fine of half a million dollars in jail time if he did not close up shop. But he's desperate, he's facing personal bankruptcy. And just a few days ago, right here in Toronto, an ice cream truck was fined $880. But he's offering curbside service. How is it that you can get a pizza pie delivered to you at your home, but you can't get a banana split? It doesn't make sense. In any event, Yahoo Nation, as they have embraced the term, are now heading to Queen's Park. And let's see what they have to say for this protest number six. Well, what brings you here to this protest, sir? Uh, you name it. Uh, <laughs> quarantine, solve martial law, tyranny, treason, everything, gun rights. So obviously you want to see the economy reopened. Yeah, I just heard Doug Ford on the radio this morning and he was saying no one wants the economy opened up more than him. However, he is taking the advice of top doctors and scientists to keep it clamp down. What do you have to say about that? Are they from China? Don't trust them. <laughs> you think he's getting his advice from China? <laughs> no, but the doctors may be. Do you buy that explanation? It's all bull****. It's all bull****. Open it up. Open it up. Uh, your corn is tyranny. Your quarantine uh, the healthy people. Let us get back to work. You know, you can talk all you want. The actions really shows what you believe and what you want to do. Uh, in terms of Dr. Williams, I think that person is 100% responsible for the complete disaster in this province because he's an unelected official guiding the lives of almost 15 million people. And that's unacceptable. I think everybody should have a choice. If they want to go to work, they should be able to go to work. If they're, if they're too scared to go to work, then they shouldn't go to work. That's it. But it should be our choice. No, I not agree with not Justin Trudeau's, not Doug Ford's, our choice. I'll say this, and I'll say this very clearly. Unless you have a license in virology, you are not qualified to speak or advise on COVID-19. And to all the doctors out there that think that they are, we're watching you, and we will hold you accountable. So your license is being put on the line for whatever you're being paid to, to advise inappropriate information on COVID-19. What do you think? Do you think these doctors and scientists are being overprotective, or would you like to see... Um, Doug Ford make an executive deci uh, decision and uh, roll the dice? Well, the, the doctors and the uh, COVID council that he's relying on for all these decisions don't have any accountability to the people, so they're unelected. And uh, Doug Ford should be stepping up and being accountable for this and making his decision on this. And, and based on, you know, do it based on the evidence that we've got. We've got like three months of evidence about this, this virus now, and it's not, it's not any worse than the flu. And uh, yeah, like take, take, you know, focus your efforts on protecting those that are at risk. Everybody else, it's 99% recovery rate. Most people don't even know they've got it. And uh, it's, it's totally unreasonable to destroy the economy over this. 82% of the fatalities have been in long-term care homes. I will say this much, since April 12th, the bioscience team from Sunnybrook Hospital who have first isolated COVID-19 has informed this government on April 12th, and we have the report, that COVID-19 has no effect on 
healthy immune tissue, nor can it replicate on healthy immune tissue. So this government has known since April 12th that, that healthy people are not affected by COVID-19. What they should have done was implement like, like some sort of facility that studies immunology and infectious disease that has accommodations for those who are susceptible to COVID-19. But they didn't do that. Instead, they started feeding us money from our own labor, closing down the economy, putting more people in danger. You have cancer patients that are afraid to go to the hospital because they're afraid they're going to get COVID and they're dying at home. This is ridiculous. I've known Doug Ford personally since I was four years old and I will call him out right now and say you're acting like a coward. Stop listening to, to bull doctors that, that are not qualified to speak on this and look at the science. What happened to Doug Ford? His election slogan two years ago was open for business. And that is so disappointing because I voted for him, but I really feel betrayed by him. When do you think we're going to get back to the old normal, or do you think this is going to linger for months? Well, I hope the new normal is way better than this, and we get rid of the politicians and the mainstream media that's lying to us and being fear mongers. That's all they're doing. And they're not telling any of the stories that really matter. People are dying but not from the virus. My friend's mother died of a hundred in a long-term care facility. She wasn't on a single medication. They paid 40 grand a year for a few years to make sure she had a personal caregiver as well as the staff there. She got kicked out before Ford stopped other personal service workers from going from one to another long care facility and uh, because she didn't work for them directly, she got kicked out, and after eight weeks, my friend's mother gave up, not seeing anybody she knew, and everybody she saw was in a mask, and she was confined to her room, not on a single medication at 100. Right now, turning the fear and testing to see how scared they can make people into just surrendering their rights. The thing that people need to really understand, the masks, the, the way they are, they're not protecting you from the virus. However, what we do is we suppress your immune system and other people discussed this already. So when you have healthy people wearing the masks, they're actually going to have hypoxia and, uh, uh, you know, there's not enough oxygen in their blood. And as of March, they do not even test you for COVID because if you're sick, they just diagnose you as a symptom case. So now they're assuming you have COVID, not even saying that you really do. So now you have people dying of a heart attack that had a sniffle. They're saying, oh, I bet he had COVID. So even though you died of a heart attack, they didn't prove you had COVID. They're going to list you as a COVID death. But now what we're doing is we're mandating the masks because the symptoms when you wear a mask all the time actually similar to someone having the COVID. So now you have a lot of people that might have supposing symptoms. And guess what the other thing I heard yesterday? Doug Ford is now became a salesperson for testing. Like the yesterday briefing, he was pretty much begging people, can you please go get tested? There's, a, there's absolutely an agenda behind this. For instance, in, on the federal level, Justin Trudeau is sitting on the like a, a campaign for a global parliament. That's conflict of interest to being the Prime Minister of Canada. There, it, this, this runs very, very deep and it needs to be exposed. Everything needs to come out into the open. You can't go to our cabins, but Doug Ford can go to his cabins? Come on. They closed, uh, the, the closed kids' camps? Like Doug Ford's not going to take his nephew? you to his cottage what about the people who don't have cottages I'm looking at your uh, sign opensummercamps.com or open summer camp I think that's uh, we ours is a singular website I, I don't understand the rationale because you're young you're healthy as far as I can tell we know there hasn't been a single death in Ontario of anyone under 20. Well, I think it's very stupid because kids don't even get it as much as adults so why can't we go to camp and and what are you going to do in the meantime? You can't go to the playground. It's all roped off, right? You can't really do anything. You just got to, they expect us to just sit inside and on the couch and just do nothing. Do you think it's unfair too? Because the premier, he's got kids, he's got grandkids, I think. Um, he has a lakefront cottage. They'll be ha able to have the camp experience, but you, you won't be able to. Yeah, I think that they should just open, like they give us a little bit, they open a little bit. When no, we have to open Canada. Free Canada, that's what the others are. Oh, make Canada free again. Wow, you are quite the young political activist. <laughs> yeah. Yep.
Oh, sir, I'm admiring your sign, let them eat cherry cheesecake. I mean, there are a whole bunch of people that have lost their jobs, they're unsure of their future, and he's advising people to stay home and eat cherry cheesecake. It's so terrible. I mean, to have a leader who's so off message and who's so off key, to be able to go and do something like that as a sort of some sort of comfort, it's like a slap in the face to Ontarians, and that's why I'm out here. I generally don't protest, but I saw that and I thought, I have to come out. It makes no sense, but like we see, you can talk all you want. The actions really shows w w what you can stand behind. So unfortunately, Doug Ford has failed people of Ontario. I'm going to repeat, Doug Ford had failed the people of Ontario. He's taken responsibility with his words, but how about some actions now? Hey folks, have you heard Premier Doug Ford, the one who ran on the campaign slogan, open for business, He's shut down a specific kind of business this summer. That would be the summer camps. We think that's wrong. We think it's disgraceful, actually. So please sign our petition, opensummercamp.com. That's opensummercamp.com. I'm aiming for 25,000 signatures, and when I get it, I'll deliver the petition to Premier Ford himself.